President Trump and Joe Biden both in Iowa today, where voters are getting a front row seat to the crowded field of Democrats running for president. Before heading to the Hawkeye State, President Trump took his latest jab at the Democratic frontrunner. Watch. I love Iowa. I, I've gotten along great. I won Iowa by a lot. The last time, usually a Republican wouldn't win it, would not win it by that much, but I won Iowa, as you know, by a lot. I have a great relationship with the farmers. I have a great relationship with uh, everybody. I mean, Iowa, I think, is going to be something that we win very easily. We're going to win Texas by a lot. We're going to win Iowa by a lot. We're going to win, I would say, every Pennsylvania. I think we're going to do very well. Ashley Strong was an advisor to former House Speaker Paul Ryan. Ben Kissel is co-host of the last podcast on the left. I'm glad to have you both here. So yeah. these are both Trump and Biden are going to be in Iowa today. Over the weekend, I think about a thousand Democrats. Just kidding. There was like 20 <laughs> Democrats there in Iowa. Um, there was a poll from CNN on the number of Democratic candidates. This is um, CNN, the Des Moines Register and Mediacom. Do you, how many people wish that several would drop out? 47% wish that several of them would drop out because there's just too many choices. 27% um, say they wish that most would drop out. Right. Ben, people are overwhelmed. Well, they will get their wish. As <laughs> soon as uh, February of next year rolls around, the, the field will be dwindled down. We have our first debate in June. But right now, the Democratic Party, the marketplace for ideas, is open for business. We have Andrew Yang talking about automation and uh, universal basic income. Mm -hmm. Pete Buttigieg talking about student loan debt that he himself carries. Elizabeth Warren talking about breaking up big tech and going against Amazon. And then Joe Biden's marketing himself. But you as, can like, see like, even if you just look up there, like, whoa, I can't even, I can't even take all well, that. There, there are a lot. So I understand it is overwhelming. Um, but again, this is the whole point of this process. After June debates, we'll start seeing them going away. Actually, and, uh, in the Washington Post today, Eugene Robinson, he has a weekly column, and he said, um, in regard to several of these candidates, that there's another important role to fill. He says, I'm talking to you, John Hickenlooper of Colorado, who would have a good chance of beating incumbent Republican Cory Gardner. I'm talking to you, Governor Steve Bullock of Montana, who could knock off GOP incumbent Steve Daines. I'm even talking to you, Beto O'Rourke, who would have a better chance than any other Texas Democrat against veteran Republican John Cornyn. But these guys are sending signals that they do not plan to run for the Senate. Correct. Should and they change their mind? I would argue that even if they wish to change their mind, it's already too late for some of them. Um, take my home state, Governor, Governor Bullock. Um, he has had to take positions that are far to the left of where the Montana party would be normally. And just look at last last uh, cycle. We had John Tester, who was running for re-election, who was running ads statewide saying how close he was with the president and how much he supported President Trump. Mm -hmm. That's a far cry from um, Governor Bullock, who's run now running for president. Well, John Tester has that kind of populist message mm -hmm. that's sort of a Venn diagram crossover with Donald but Trump. It has, but it has so Eugene Robinson's point though Ben is that look 24 people are not going to be president one person is right. going to be president <laughs> yes. and that if you want to actually make something happen in Washington you can ask the Democrats now or ask the Republicans when the Democrats had the majority in the Senate you cannot get a lot done if I, you don't have the Senate I agree. And they're not even going to try in the midterms of 2018 obviously the Dems picking up 66 seats in the house the Senate was not as bad as it could have been so I actually don't disagree with the notion of running for Senate um, and just sort of stop, don't shoot but you know if you shoot for the moon you end up um, you end up among the stars I don't don't know what that cliche is so perhaps <laughs> these people are just trying to get their name out there and get some recognition and maybe that could catapult them in the future issues for are senators. also really important Ashley um, CNN polled candidates uh, a question the candidate must support in order to get their vote sure a right to abortion at 79 percent that was the highest uh, percentage uh, climate change is a threat to humanity 75 percent and a ban on assault style weapons 57 uh, percent medicare for all at 49 percent um, that was about iowa caucus goers but from a standpoint when president trump says i think we'll win iowa easily what do you think about that? I think that what you're seeing is the extremes on both sides are really coming out in the primary, as as would be the case if you were um, expecting on the presidential. Um, that is what I was getting to, and my broader point of these people, if they wish to choose um, to drop out of the presidential race and get into another race, they're really taking a lot of risk in running for president and taking these extreme positions that Iowa mm -hmm. primary voters wish, and then perhaps trying to run if you're a Hickenlooper in Colorado for Senate or perhaps a Bullock for Senate in Montana. You're risking a lot. Well, I would just push back a little bit on the idea of that these are extreme positions. If you look at three-fourths of Americans are pro-choice. They don't want Roe v. Wade overturned. And obviously, I think Biden made the right choice by sort of stepping back a little bit for his support of the Hyde Amendment. That was a nice stepping but back. That was... 
a, that was a complete and total flip-flop. Well, you know, I mean... After decades of voting for the Hyde Amendment. Well, the Democratic Party changed their platform, and if he wants to be the standard bearer for the party, I don't he's going to have to know. You were in Congress for a long time. Bit. The Hyde Amendment is like a salve it is, for a lot of things. It's, and it's a bipartisan support that you've seen for over 40 years. So. Do you think it'll change? I don't. What about you? Well, I mean, I, it, that'll be extremely difficult. The issue of, a, of abortion. So, that, so then the question becomes: like, Is that the thing? Is that, well, I mean, is that I, the horse you want to ride into this election? You know, I think what's going on right now is we're seeing the strategic attack on reproductive rights, uh, Missouri, you know, Alabama, you yeah. name it. Um, they want to take this to the Supreme Court, and we'll see what happens. But I believe that uh, they've overreached, and I don't think the court's going to going to hear their argument. How is New York treating you? You came all the way from Montana. <laughs> I did. Uh, I don't see any mountains around. No. Though. And then you had a lot of fresh air. You look great, and um, congrats you. on your post-Congress career. Thank you. Just word. bold prediction: if it is yeah. going to be Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Stacey Abrams. I'm just throwing that out into the ether. You want it out there right now? I just so want that. Biden and Abrams. Later. If it happens, it, mark, right. mark my words. Actually, strong and Ben Kissel. Thank you.